Welcome everybody to the Harid Dam. We are here for rounds number one of the Red Square Inflatable Power Boat Championship as we start off with a brand new season. It's going to be flat water racing and all the big names are here to compete. Eugene Foster and Corsi Italia ride for Wild Africa Cream and they are the reigning SA champions in the standard class. Yeah, we had a lot of fun last year in the season. We had a lot of fun in this year, so we had a lot of fun to be here to daar te blij. Um, ik weet nu wat die dame is, nou niet als grootste punt op die ogenblik is, so, uh, maar ik hoop het gaat goed in Nawe. Ja, ons het, ons het, ons is nou twee dagen bezig met setup. Um, ons, ik denk ons is al rijdt waar ons nou is. Um, die, in die circuit rijden maar klein tropies en lang al maar weer maar die groot, gewone achtiens wat ons rijdt op die lang al. En dus ons goed, oh, wel, ons is happy met ons goed wat ons krijgt, ons hoop is net, ons hoop is goed genoeg voor die reis. Dylan Clutie and Lyndon Collins are the reigning world champs in the blooper class and they've got a brand new sponsor on board. Yeah, um, always after winning such a nice event like that, we're always going to be uh, the people to beat. Um, previously there was no pressure and now obviously a little bit of pressure but uh, yeah, it's just about the enjoyment now and just trying to, to stay up in the front and maintain our points for the, for the rest of the season to follow. Yeah, we're going to have to look if we try setting up yesterday, but obviously not knowing what the course is going to be like and uh, and the water conditions are always changing, so we'll have to have a look this morning to see what, how, how long the course is actually going to be and they'll make the necessary adjustments. George von Baalen and Bradley Smith moved to the modified class for 2010. They know that crop choice on this type of water is absolutely critical. We had a couple of tests yesterday that seemed like uh, the best choice was a smaller crop. Um, Bradley just brought this one back from pretty late last night, so um, I've got a quite a good idea that that's probably the one we're going to use. So yeah, I think it's uh, essential to get in the front and get enough draft to stay there. In 2009, the Emerald Fires do appear to be very competitive in the blueprint class. We'll have to wait and see how they do in the modifieds. Mike Hutton competes with his co-driver Candice Petrius in the modified class, but he doesn't like flat water. Fresh water is not my absolute favourite, but um, as usual, the reef dam won't uh, disappoint us. The water's a little bit dead, um, but I think the problem is uh, obviously across the board for everybody. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll hopefully we can get a constant speed on the long haul and um, I'm in fact hoping for a little bit of a win to make it a little bit interesting. Um, I'm also, the, I think, the only type in the modified, uh, so that will be, a, it'll be an interesting race tomorrow at the circuit. Two days of flat water action at the Harit Dam that lies ahead of us. Day one would mainly consist of a short course racing on a circuit, while day two would be a long haul over the entire distance, or most of the distance, of the Harit Dam. Teams are preparing and getting their boats ready for action. The compulsory drivers briefing held by the members of Prop SA and Sahiba, informing the drivers what to do, just laying down the rules and regulations. And then it was time to hit the water for the first standard class action of the 2010 season with a future life standard class. 11 boats on the water. The big names might be here, but Foster and Taliat are not known for their speed on the flat water. A man who dominated the flat water in the 2009 season will be uh, taking the lead. It's uh, Gordon Butler this season riding with his brother Donovan. And we spoke to him before the race. He says he spent a lot of time testing his kit before the season. They uh, test all kinds of um, engine combinations, ride heights and uh, props to see exactly what will be working for them in the season. The water does differ from event to event. So a good setup choice here for Butler as he leads the way. Closely followed by the Blue Aquarius of uh, Jakub Kruisenziel, who last year rode with Lati Rastasi for most of the season. This time round, he's also teaming up with his brother, Johan, in that Blue Aquarius. But that boat of Butler is just so well set up, it's not lifting at all as he goes out of the corners. It just stays right down in the water, and that's the way you want it. That's Barry Marcus, old kid that rode the modified class last year, now in the hands of Des Pochita and Francois Marais, m and Engineering Services. A swan on the boat indicates that they are the standard class champions of South Africa at the moment. Wild Africa Queens Foster and Taliat not feeling totally at home in the flat water, though. However, for the next national race, the uh, tables will be turned as they head down, possibly to Mossel Bay for a surf race. Great to see a couple of new sponsors coming on board for the 2010 season. Uh, Kevin Fye and Trevor Townsend, the uh, Code Blue Alarms Aquarius, looking rather well prepared. Untouchable at the front of the pack, though, it's Gordon Butler in the Elkis Thunder Cat. He made it clear this year he wants to compete for the title, so Foster and Taliad are going to have their work cut out for them. Another surf specialist going through there, that's Jacques Mathieu in the PH Blanc Higher Caesar as they head into the last lap of the race. And eighth place it's going to be for Wild Africa Queens, Forster and Talyard. Not a great way to open the first race of the season. 
not scoring maximum points there, but these guys couldn't put a foot wrong. It's the Butler brothers showing that they are the men to watch on the flat water for the 2010 season. Heat number two off the line once again, the Elkase boat leading the way. And just look how well he controls it as they head towards that first boy. This time around, Conti Creed in touch with him. Wild African Dream on the outside. Conti Creed's going to be in second place, looks like. That's Kyle Colby. And there's a big tussle there between Colby and Kloester Zeal. Colby now moving down to third place. As Kloester Zeal just slips through on the inside. On board we go with Tashis Botmar. Kolani Transport. Now as we catch the boat as they come down past the start-finish line. This is the... Uh, Start of the second lap, Butler at the front. And then we've got Jakub Klosterzil on the outside. Kulani transports come by uh, Carl Colby as well. So Colby now been relegated down to fourth place. He's the man that uh, won the SA Champs in 2008. And he wants to try and uh, stay in close contact with the leaders. Foster and Talia are coming through this time round. Seventh place for them. But a side-by-side -side racing with Kevin Fry and Trevor Towns and the Code Blue Alarms boat from East London. Foster and Talia have got the inside line going through the W. It's uh, the Butler brothers that lead Jaco Klosterzil in second place in the Aquarius. And then it's Colby coming through. Looks like Colby's taken that third place away from uh, Tertius Portma, the Kolani Transport Geo now in fourth place. And keep in mind, this is circuit racing. They do nine laps of the short course. Two of those nine laps have got to be done as equalizers. An equalizer lap, they take a longer lap around the course. And uh, you can take that equalizer lap anytime you want to. But of course, it's uh, knowing when to take it. You've got to make sure you do so in clean water. Someone's gone over though. It's S9. It's Adrian Pretorius and Hazel von Beek. 70% of the race has been run though, so you've got a result. At the time that boat went over, it was Butler that was in the lead. So Butler takes heat number two as well. On board with uh, Tasha Sportman, Daryl Simon. Simon, the co driver, on the left hand side. Not getting a great start in the final heat for the Kulani Transport Geo. He's in the soft water now as they head through that first turn, boy. They've got to hold their positions as they go around that boy. There you can see the Kulani Transport boat just behind PH Blantyre. Now around that turn, boy. Back on board with Kulani Transport, we go. And this is as real as it gets. You can see the water just flying around. Visibility almost down to zero as they follow the boats. Only one boat behind them. PH Blantyre just in front of Jacques Mati and Carlo Watkins. No one seems to have an answer, though, for the pace being shown by Butler. He's done his setup so, so well. And he's leading the way. Only Carl Colby staying in contact in the Conti Creek boat in second place. Then Jakob Klosterzil, the Aquarius going through. PH Maltire in fourth place. Back on board with Kulani as they are pushing hard, holding its sixth place overall. A team that has spent so much time preparing for the national season. They did all of the regional races. First for race, then to Clarkstorp. Then they went off to the Transatlantic with Barry Marks to compete in the open ocean for the first time. Didn't do too well in the ocean, but keep in mind, these are flat water guys. So uh, a team that has really shown a lot of tenacity. And Bortma showing he's got the skill to pilot an inflatable boat. Definitely a team to watch for the rest of the season. Right now, though, it's the Thundercat of uh, Gordon Butler leading the way, followed by the Aquarius of Kyle Colby. Then it's the Aquarius of Jakub Klosterzil. And then the Caesar of BH Blanthire. It's Jacques Mathieu in fourth place. So all three of the top manufacturers in South Africa in those top four positions. In case you've just joined us, we are at the Harip Racing, the first round of the SA Inflatable Powerboat Racing season with Red Square. And uh, this is the standard class, the final heat of the standard class. Gordon Butler leading. He's taken command of all three heats today. So a man that clearly has a lot of pace on the flat water and one of the fastest boats and probably best set up boats on the flat water. We'll have to wait and see if they can maintain that advantage as we head into the surf for the next round though. I think it's probably going to be uh, Foster and Taliat or uh, perhaps even Matia and Watkins at Custer the Four. They are the big surf riders in the national series. Talking about Matia, there he goes, the PH plant hire boat set up by his father, Vessel Matia, who rolls Caesar down in Cape Town. And uh, a very, very strong competing geo in the surf, but the win in the third and final heat will be going to Gordon and Donovan Butler. The Elkase Thundercat has the pace and they set the benchmark for racing to come in the season. Well, I was a little bit worried this morning. I got a, a lot of guys up to four help them. But uh, at the end of the day, I think uh, skill and everything took over and uh, got it in the bag, eh? won it. Right through, I've got my brother as my co-pilot now. My dad is my pit crew. Whole family came down for this race, so it's so it brings some of the family together as well. Eh? I've got my, my technician down here, Gil from Gilcroft, and uh, he's, he's made a major difference in my performance today. Really helped me out. So let's recap those overall finishing positions. The future life standard class win goes to the Butler brothers and the Elkase Thundercat. Yaku and Johan Kloester Zeal, the Aquarius taking second. Carl Colby and Ross Templeton, Conti Creed, third place. Jacques Mathieu and Carlo Watkins in fourth place. While Forster and Taliat taking fifth overall.
The PH plant hire blueprint plus seven boats on the water for the action will be going on board with stainless stick rocker Erasmus and Werner Miller watches Erasmus opens the gas how quickly Miller moves back he deweights the boat then he moves forward but the inside line belongs to Hilton Otto and Rudy van Beek on the outside it's the total folk of uh, looks like Leon Kruger and Yvette Lachranzi so it's a three-way struggle for that first line of course they draw positions for the very first start and from there on they start in their finishing positions of the previous heat. PH Blanc higher leads the way. Hilton Otto and Rudy van Veek. Then it's Rocker Erasmus and Werner Miller of a stainless stick boat. Then it looks like Donovan Grelich coming through. And look at that man. The world champion started off in seventh place. He's already up into fourth. So a great run by Dylan Clouty and Lyndon Collins. The refresh Aquarius doing really well to move up almost three positions in just two corners. You're watching heat number one of the blueprint class. Hilton Otto, Rudy von Beek leading the way in PH Blanta are being chased hard by Rocco Rasmus and Werner Miller, stainless stick. And a big move on the inside there on the Century Electrical boat. That's Dylan Clutie and Lyndon Collins, the refresh Aquarius making a move there. Code Blue alarms the second Code Blue boat on the water. That's uh, Brendan Amaral. Moving up from standard class, he's running blueprints this year. So we go on board with Rocker Erasmus. Watch Werner Miller as they hit this boy. He'll be hanging over the side of that boat, trying to keep that nose down, going forward and keeps the nose of the boat down while Rocker Erasmus just applies the pressure. We are at the Harib Dam racing in the first national event of the Red Square Inflatable Albo Championships of 2010. And uh, a big move by Dylan Clutie and Lyndon Collins taking the short lap and beating Rocket Erasmus coming out ahead of the uh, stainless stick team. So at the moment it's Collins moving up into second place just behind Hilton Otto and Rudy van Veek. Otto still having a big lead. I don't think the world champ is going to close that gap down to him though. But I can tell you now Clutie is definitely going to try to so riding on board with Rocket Erasmus. And I think Erasmus mistimed his equalizer lap that allowed Clutie just to slip ahead of him. So at the moment, it's PH Blantyre, first place uh, leading the race. Then Refresh Aquarius, the World Championship team of Dylan Clutie and Lyndon Collins, being followed by Rocket Erasmus and Werner Miller in stainless stick. Man that's not doing well on the water at the moment. That's Brendan Amaral, moved up from the standard class from last year. And the Code Blue boat at the moment, somewhere around seventh place on the water. But PH Blantyre, it's Hilton Otto and Rudy von Veig taking a win in the first heat of the blueprint class. In the second heat, it was Dylan Clutie and Lyndon Collins getting the jump on Hilton Otter and Rudy van Veek going through to win. So Refresh Aquarius grabbing heat number two. PH Blantyre, Refresh Aquarius, one win each. Will Rocker Erasmus come into play to split it evenly between the top three boats? We'll have to wait and see. At the moment, it's Luty leading the way. Then it's Rocker Erasmus, stainless stick in second place, hotly being pursued there by Hilton Otto and Rudy van Veek. PH Blantyre is not going to give up. They've shown they've got the pace, winning heat number one. On board now with Rocker Erasmus going through the W. Trying to make a big dent into the lead that Clouty and Collins had built up. They're just ahead of him. Keep in mind, BH Blantyre took the first heat. Clouty and Collins, the refresh boat, taking heat number two. Whoever wins this heat between those two will take the uh, blueprint class. Only one man can upset the apple cart. That's Rocker Erasmus on board. Clouty and Collins now as we complete yet another lap. But, uh, this is Jan Skutter and Anzel Janse van Vieren, the battle at the back of the back. Closing down to Leon Kluger and Yvette Lafrancy in the total boat. is their first national season this year round. And the Geo County line in seventh place. The pace is hot and fast, but uh, Dylan Knuti and Lyndon Collins manage to stay ahead of Hilton Otto and Rudy van Veek and PH Blantyre. PH Blantyre going past Rocker Erasmus to take second place, but the win would go to Knuti and Collins in the refresh Aquarius, making it two wins in the blueprint class. A great way to open the season for the world champ. Yeah, look, uh, we at the drawing of the, our grid positions, are full the eight, eight on the grid, so that didn't put us in any good positioning um, yeah worked our way up to second position and obviously moved up the good which helped us a lot and managed just to get in front of Hilton and yeah I think the guys that got into the, into the clear water today were, were always going to we're, we're be at a much more bigger advantage than the rest of the guys yeah um, we, we actually setting up yesterday we, we changed we changed our whole setup to today um, looking at the course and with the motor that's been built for us by Mark um, yeah but it was revving very nicely so it changed a bit one of the settings and it, it worked for us I think the key here to, to get to the first uh, this first turn boy quick, quickly before anybody else is, is the key. Recapping the action on the uh, blueprint class, the PH Blantyre blueprint class. It's still including Lyndon Collins taking the win for Refresh Aquarius. Hilton Otto Rudy from Vake in second place, PH Blantyre, mm. while Rocker Erasmus and Werner Miller coming through to put Stainless Tech in a well-deserved third place. Moving on to the big guns now. This is the Century Electrical Modify class. Eight boats on the water. Some big notable names missing from this year's competition, one of them being full low from Danlo Marine, he's not taking part in racing anymore, but uh, still here to support the guys as Barry Marks gets away first, Century Electrical leading the way, then it's Mark Ahrens, 
coming up in a close second place. A big battle there with uh, Mike Hutting on the right hand side. It's going to be Orange and Hutting fighting it out for second place. It's Barry Mark pulls a lead and already Mark is pulling away. He had a lot of engine trouble last year and hopefully this year he's got all those troubles sorted out. The duo from the friendly city, it's George von Baden and Bradley Smith. They hail from Port Elizabeth. Emerald Fires in fourth place. They're newcomers to the modified class this year and they're right up there in the top four. And Barry Marks leads the way. A man that's got so much experience on the flat water this year returning with his old co-driver, Yolandi van Dijk. So the duo knows one another very, very well. As we catch the boats going through the W as Barry Marks leading the way. Mark Orens coming up in second place there. And then that battle for second place. Looks like Mike Hutting and Candice Petrullius just faltering a little bit there. When we interviewed him earlier on, you heard him say he doesn't like the flat water. He's an absolute monster in the surf. The man is fearless, so we're going to have to watch out for them as we head down to Mossel Bay. But this time around, they're in third place. A huge battle going on between Emerald Fires and Danlo Marine. That's Donovan Granich piloting Phil Lowe's old boat. So Granich currently lying in fifth place overall. As we catch M13 coming through, that's Andre Erasmus and uh, Rake Lombard, AE Electrical. The man in second place who rode so well, Mark Ahrens, this year riding at a Thundercat. He had that built specially boat for him by Lionel Ball in East London. It's a special flat water boat with uh, Ball's old World Championship mojo on the back, running in second place. But the wood would go to Barry Mark, Century Electrical. So Marks and Van Dijk showing they would be the ones to reckon with as the modified heats continue. It would be a repeat win for Barry Marks and Yolandi van Dijk in heat number two. Mike Hutton coming through to uh, fifth. Mark Orens to second place. As we enter heat number three, it's a lot of pace off the line once again. It's going to be Barry Marks in the front, but look at Orens and Hutton. They side by side as they go around that top point. This time around, the Danlo boat is in there as well. Donovan Granich and uh, Rene Leroux showing they've got the speed. But Orens has been forced to the side there. He's going to have to watch out and try and stay on the inside line looking for the clean water as Barry Marks leads the way. Look at George Van Baden on the right-hand side. It's Emerald Fires going side by side with a man from Gauteng. Who's going to go through there first? It's uh, George Van Baden that gets the run on Mark Orens. As we go into the second lap, it's Barry Marks that leads. And that's Mike Hutton and uh, George Van Baden and Bradley Smith making a good run for it and grabbing that third place. Spoke to George Van Baden before the race and he said he knew that prop choice was going to be very critical on the day. They brought a special prop up from Port Elizabeth uh, just the morning before the race and it seems like it's working for Van Baden. But can he hold off a charging Mark Orens? Orens is not going to let go as Mike Hutting and Candice Petrullius come through. They're in fourth place at the moment so struggling a bit on the flat water Mike Hutting is. But don't write him off because he can come back at any time. Mark Orens getting past George Van Baden. And of course this year Mark Orens riding with uh, Phil Lowe's uh, ex-co-driver. Big Boy Van Vleck, one of the lightest guys in the industry. He weighs just on 50 kilograms, Big Boy Van Vleck does. So it makes a big difference having that light guy in the front of the boat. So uh, it could be a good combination that could work for Orens as we progress into the season. It's not going to do him any good in the surf, though. Once someone a little bit heavier in the front of the boat, although Phil Lowe has shown in the past that Big Boy Van Vleck could pull out the goods in the surf. As we catch uh, George Van Baden going through in third place, Mark Orens just ahead of him, not being able to close down that gap. It's their first time taking part in the National Series for Four Main and Beatrix, the Cork Castings uh, Incorporated. Eighth place on the water at the moment, so they're right at the back of the pack, but it is a learning curve. And as you progress throughout the season's races, you do get better and you gain a lot more skill. The action of the water was thick and fast, but nobody could touch Barry Marks and Yolandi van Dijk. Century Electrical making it a hat-trick win on the day, scoring maximum points. Marks will be going away with 60 points from the first national here at the Harib Dam. One thing is for sure, Marks leaves behind the trouble of the 2009 season. Maybe a young Barry Marks in training as he spoke to father and son about the race. You know, look, I'm glad it all worked out. If you work a little bit harder and you don't lose concentration, I think it's all contributing. So yeah, um, a lot of hard work, yes, a lot of sweat, sometimes almost tears. But yeah, the frustration creeps in and you sometimes lose track, track of what you want to do or where you actually are. So yeah, luckily everything came together. And I'm happy. Yes, the place was pretty good today. I think we were learning maybe about 92, maybe 91. Uh, I think so, I'm not sure. Could be slower. But um, the other folks are catching up. Last heat, I think the oaks caught up a little bit. I'm not sure. I not really look back that much. But um, picked up a problem with my steering damper in the last heat, but that didn't really keep us back. This was a twice, maybe a close call or two, and that's about it.
to the man from Vereniging setting the standard of what's to come in the modified class for this season. Recapping those results in the Century Electrical modified class, it's Marks and Van Dijk taking the win. Michael Hutting and Candice Petrurius in second place, Aquarius, while George from Barlow and Bradley Smith, a great start to the season for the Port Elizabeth Geo. Emerald Fires Communications taking a third place. The action on day two would consist of an area-bound long haul and we're doing eight laps of just over 14 kilometers per lap. All the teams want to consolidate the points they built up in the circuit racing with a really good finish in the long haul event. Being an endurance event, teams will carry just enough fuel to complete two to three laps. Fuel strategies being a very important part of this race, they would then stop throughout the race to refuel and take on extra fuel as required. As the drivers discussed the course, we went in search of Dylan Clutie from Team Refresh. They were struggling to get the setup right. Start this week, I'm battling a little bit. Uh, we're just going to try another prop now in different settings. Morning, morning. Yeah, we're battling to get the speed that we're needing. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully in the next half an hour, you can ask me the same question. I'll give you a better answer. Forster and Talia from Wild African Cream finished with a top five position on the circuit, but what would happen on the long haul? Uh, the moment, like, it's, uh, the weird, like, good, like, uh, the price won't be given, but that's the whole form, so far, like, it's mooi. Um, it's good to sit a bit off, so on the moment, it's going to be 83. Um, it's good to have the 86 rounds hard to put on, so it's a bit better, and so we're more relaxed, so we're going to see what we're going to do now. Forster trying to squeeze every bit of speed that he can out of the Wild Africa cream boat. Just tackling on 114 kilometers today in the long haul. The entire field gets off. They'll be competing in their three different classes, which are, of course, modified blueprint and the standard class. They head off on the action on day two. In the modified class, Barry Marks took an early stranglehold on the race, which he managed to hold on to throughout the entire event. Michael Hutton in the Aquarius boat being the closest to compete. The modifieds will be getting speeds of just on 95 kilometers per hour on the long haul as we watch marks going through. Nadia Botma and Mary Jane Karaya leading in the club event. Five boats on the water taking part in the club event that ran together on the long haul circuit. Marks is leading in the modifieds, but he has been chased by Michael Hutting and Candice Petrurius in the Aquarius. Michael Hutting off the pace the entire weekend on the circuit as well, not performing the way he wants to. Third place in the modifieds was Mark Orange, the bikes and boats. Thundercat coming through, but trouble for Brendan Amaral and Daryl Reed as the Code Blue Alarmist boat, their first year in blueprints, is not going their way. Time for the boats to refuel. Keep in mind these modified boats would do just on three and a half kilometers per litre, so they're not that heavy on fuel. The heaviest on the lot would be the standard class, only three kilometers per litre, while the blueprints will average under four kilometers per litre. Going on board with Barry Marks now, going down. He's got some trouble with uh, a fuel line. We spoke to him, he says one of the fuel lines got kinked and he had to undo it. Luckily he got that sorted and the boat was back onto the pace. We are racing at the Harif Dam in round number one of the SA Inflatable Powerboat Series. This is the long haul event, 114 kilometers they'll be tackling on the open water. The Klosterzeel brothers coming through in the Aquarius, they are leading in the standard class at the moment. Taking on a bit of fuel there, they will load up just on the 20 liters of fuel and that will probably last them uh, just on two to three laps. Although Gordon Butler dominated in the short circuit, he was definitely lacking the pace to compete in the top three in the standard class. So we head on board with Barry Marks and just watch how quickly things can go wrong. The nose of the boat all straight and then the wind just lifts it up. Marks has got a back right down that throttle. Then get right back on the gases. Look at that in slow-mo. All going well. And watch his hand on the throttle as he tries to control their boat. And he does so with absolute superb skill. Marks is in command at the front of the modified class. Michael Hutton chasing hard in second place, but he couldn't do anything about the gap that Marks had built up. In the standard class, the Clueless Eels were dominating at the front while PH Plantire's Jacques Mathieu, the Caesar, holding on to sixth place overall. Tracks Plantire Jacques Turner rode at the front for the entire race in the blueprint class, but a technical infringement would see him disqualified, leaving him off the final point standings for the day. Barry Marks coming through, he took overall honours, a clean sweep for the weekend, winning both the short circuit and the long haul. That means he takes away maximum points for the weekend. Marks and Lundy van Dijk winning in the modified class for Century Electrical. Blueprint class went to Hilton Otto and Rudy van Beek, PH Blanchire, while the Aquarius of Yaku and Johan Klosterzeel taking the standard class ahead of Carl Colby. The first event of the new season brought a new sponsor on board as well. We spoke to Jan van Dijk of Future Life. It's a growing sport and the popularity is increasing. So we thought we'll uh, go where the, the mass will be going. And um, obviously because it's such an energetic sport and our product, which is a future life uh, immune boosting energy meal, 
you know, who uh, is there to help these athletes who's busy with all this high intensive sport to actually help them with their energy and protein levels and, and the rest of their supplements that they need. That concludes our coverage from the first round of the SA Inflatable Powerboat Championships. For the next time, we'll be heading down to the surf. Till then, stay safe.